Hello, everybody sitting at home there. Um, welcome to our Zoom Parenting Information Night. It was so lovely to meet many of you um, earlier in the year when we actually managed to sneak a face-to-face -face, um, catch up in. And uh, it was great to meet all those parents who made it the opportunity to come along and, and have a listen. And so here we are in slightly different uh, times and a slightly different topic as well. But of course, it's very closely linked to the work that I've been doing with your gorgeous children at Hazel Glen Kinder there. Um, and a big shout out to Deb Rainbow and Charlotte and Candice and all the wonderful staff there at the kindergarten who are doing amazing things with your children. In fact, they've been doing amazing things all along, but earlier in the year, they said to themselves, let's just do what we're already doing well, even better. And to that end, they decided to implement and really go hard with the You Can Do It education program. You, I'm sure, are familiar with the five little uh, puppet characters. I've got uh, little Ricky Resilience, who's never far away from me. And of course, this is what the teachers have been really working hard to develop in your children. I had the pleasure of um, working in the classrooms and uh, meeting all your gorgeous little kids. And they're absolutely adorable. And um, they're certainly growing into fine little people, even though we find ourselves in difficult um, situations, or should I say challenging situations, but nothing that we can't get around. So today's session is about, as you can see on the screen in front, the parenting strengths of highly effective parents. And I know that we all want to be the best possible parents that we can be. Now, to facilitate this Zoom um, presentation, I've got a lovely um, techno whiz in the background there. And so I'll be asking Kim to change the slide as needed. Um, and you have also been able, I hope, to um, print off, or at least perhaps be referring to this um, little handout that um, we've prepared. And you might like to grab a pen as well, because sometimes there are some ideas that you would like to you know, jot down, maybe book titles or things that you hear. Um, if we were all together in a group, I would be able to hear your feedback and your input, and you could actually each make suggestions that other parents might think, oh, great, I really like that idea. Um, I'm going to make a note of that. I guess we'll be less able to do that, but hopefully I can remember lots of tips to share with you. And who knows, at another time, we might be able to get back um, face to face. So here we go, and we've got the first slide up on the screen there. The parenting strengths of highly effective parenting. And there's no doubt that we, um, we want the best for our kids, don't we? We want them to be, I'm just going to make that fill my screen, that slide. Where is that option? There it is. Ah, beautiful. So yes, the teachers, the parents, all shaking hands and congratulating themselves because the children are at the top of that pedestal. They've successfully um, graduated for high school and they're on to the next stage of their lives. So before we go into these parenting strengths and a fair bit of focus is going to be on them um, with this session, we're going to just reflect for a little bit on the things that we want for our children. So Kim, can you pop up the next slide for me? So what do we want for our children? Well, this is where I'd invite you to give me your suggestions, but I've done lots of these workshops and I know lots of the things that parents say that we want for our children. And I guess number one, we want them to be happy. Yes, we want them to be happy. We want them to be fulfilled. We want them to be successful. We want them to be living their best life. We want them to be healthy. We want them to be responsible. We want them to be respectful. We want them to be sociable. We want them to be confident, able to speak up and assert themselves in a positive way. We want our children to have stickability. We want them to persist, to do the hard yards, and to know that sometimes we have to do things that are not easy or fun. We want them to be organized. We want them to be 
able to set goals for themselves uh, and learn how to break those goals down into small achievable steps to help them um, achieve those goals. We want our kids to, as I said earlier, be social, to get along with others, to work well in a team, to be able to negotiate, to solve conflicts peacefully. And I guess a, a, a really important one in the current climate is that we want our kids to be resilient. We want them to be able to cope when life dishes out challenging times, tough moments. So all these things that we want for our children, guess what? Your children's teachers want the same, same things for, their, for your children. And so together, as a team, we can really um, you know, work to develop and achieve each of these things that we want for our children. Now, onto the next slide. It's so important to realise that, mums, your actions matter so much. And we can see there the little Parent of the Year award that's been made. Um, I couldn't have done it without you, says the teacher. And, you know, never has a truer word been said than right now, where parents, and I'll come to dads in a minute, but your role at the moment is, is heightened. And we certainly acknowledge the challenges that that comes with, but we couldn't do it without you and your children won't achieve what they will ultimately achieve without the input and the support um, that you provide. So yes, mothers, your actions matter so much to your children. And as we look at the next slide, what fathers say and do matters too. In fact, it's quite interesting that um, research tells us that where you might think that your children look up to and admire sporting heroes or um, music icons or people in the public eye, in actual fact, children look up the most to their parents. They hold their parents in the highest possible regard. And I think it's worthwhile keeping that in mind ourselves um, as we, um, say and do things in front of our children that they are always watching and they always have those radar dish ears tuned in to what you're doing and uh, not only what you're saying but most particularly what you're doing. Um, dads, taking the opportunity to help out at school when things open up and we're back at school. You know, I think sometimes that seems to be a mum's job, but boy, oh boy, kids love it when their dads come up and support them at school as well. So fingers crossed we can get back to doing that really soon. All right, so we'll move on to the next slide. So the many roles of parents, yes, uh, we know that you are doing so many jobs, more jobs now than even before. So on that slide, this is shows babysitter, there's counsellor. But let's think about um, negotiator. Is that mediator? Is it nurse? Is it teacher? Oh my gosh, yes, teacher. Um, is it uh, activities manager? Is it, um, you know, free time, walking, exercise, um, time, so many things that um, falls to you at this tricky stage. Um, and we're putting on this hat and taking that one off and putting that one on, and putting that one on. And in between, I guess you're doing your own work. Let's not forget that. Um, wow. Okay. So, so many more roles these days than perhaps in, um, in, in days gone by. But what I want to do now is just spend a few minutes looking at, I guess what we could call not so good styles of parenting. And I know we all have um, challenging times, let's say bad days, where we might see glimpses of these not so good styles of parenting uh, coming through and totally not here to judge, but rather just reflect shortly or briefly on these not so good styles before we move into looking at those parenting styles that will really help you uh, face this task um, that you have um, as parents. And I guess we all acknowledge that it's probably one of the most important jobs that we could ever undertake in our lives, this parenting. So have a look in the mirror 
as you can see, this couple in the slide, she's looking through uh, her fingers there um, and looking to see signs of these various um, not so good styles. You also have your handout here and you can see in the handout um, for each of these not so good um, styles that there is a little bit of um, detail about what that particular style looks like and also the impact of that style on children. So that's certainly worth, uh, even though we won't go through every word of this um, page on the um, presentation now, good for you guys to just have a look at in your own time. So if we can just flick now to the next slide, which is the authoritarian style. And oh my gosh, you can certainly see from uh, looking at that picture, there's dad in his um, protective gear, shall we say. So very kind of um, strict uh, in the authoritarian style, uh, obedience, uh, respect for authority, uh, which, which, is, which is not a bad thing to show respect, but you don't tend to listen to your child. Uh, you don't tend to involve them to ask their opinion. Um, you could be bossy and you might discipline um, with anger and anger kind of approach to your discipline. So as you can see there, there's quite um, distinctive and interesting impact on the child if you're parenting in that authoritarian style um, a lot of the time. Let's look down at the next slide, which is the permissive style. So I guess uh, a complete opposite to the authoritarian style where you're there's the one who calls the shots and you tend not to clearly communicate your expectations um, of behavior in your child, both at home and, and at school. Uh, I guess the permissive style of parent um, tends not to penalize for inappropriate behavior. For example, by taking away privileges or giving some you know, space time um, when your child's broken rules you tend not to make demands or have expectations of your child to behave appropriately. Um, and perhaps you give your child too much freedom. So they are, you know, the boss of what they choose to do. Um, and you can see with that permissive style, there are some considerable impacts on your children if that tends to be the way uh, you parent most of the time. I think what's interesting about that is that um, we want our kids to be able to, as it says here, tolerate age appropriate frustration, that they don't always get what they want immediately when they want them. So I think that's something that we can keep in mind um, with that one too. Um, disorganized child, getting out of homework and chores. Well, we don't want that because there's so many more chores happening at home. We wanna make sure our kids are pulling their weight. Okay, so down to the next slide, which talks about the powerless style. And I actually really like this, um, this slide because, you know, one mum saying to the other, why isn't Liz wearing her safety helmet? And the other mum is saying, I can't get her to wear it. Well, you totally can. And I bet there's lots of you nod, nod, nodding there saying, well, just put the, gar the bike in the garage and unless she gets her helmet on, she doesn't go on the bike. End of story. But not every parent would have that opinion, I guess. Um, the powerless style, you fail to follow through on rules uh, and you don't enforce consequences uh, when your child says the wrong thing or does the wrong thing. Um, there's no C in that discipline. Um, and consistency is the key. If you say this will be if, then you absolutely have to follow through with it. And you know what, to that end, if you're putting in place a consequence, don't make it a consequence that you won't be able to stick with. For example, it's easy to say, you know, if you if you continue to do this, there'll be no TV for the week. Well, you're not going to want no TV for the week because there'll be a time when you absolutely want to have your child allowed to watch some TV and, you know, have that break that you need at the time. So just, you know, be careful that um, or don't tends to um, not enforce the consequences that they that they told their child. Okay, so now to the next slide, which talks about the overprotective style. 
And of course, we want to protect our children. Of course, we want to guard them from any bad stuff that could come in their way. What? Life, as we know. So, you know, rather than want to sort of keep our kids, hold them tight to ourselves, you know, twenty four seven, and you know, note note they don't actually want to. We rather need to teach our kids how to cope with the challenges. Resist the temptation to be the protector and rather look to develop these skills in our children. Okay, from the overprotective style, we're going to move to the over emotional style. <laughs> My God, she says, looking at that report card. What does that overly emotional style look like? Well, you believe that getting upset is a, an effective way to solve problems. You get overly angry overly worried, overly crushed and depressed when, you know, you're confronted with your child's problems. And you can see, again, the impact on your child of the over-emotional style of parenting. Okay, the next slide talks about the lack of expectations where you're going, yeah, whatever. You, you, you don't have um, standard on education, um, you're not communicating that you expect them to do their very best and to work as hard as they can in school. Um, you're convinced about how beneficial it is to get a good education um, and you share that with your child. Uh, and I guess particularly at this time, um, you, you might not provide a, a spot for your little person to do their, their homework or their home learning activity. But, you know, that's uh, you sort of giving that message that you don't really have expectations for what they're going to achieve at school. And then the, the final one, direct opposite to the lack of expectations kind of parenting, is the excessive um, expectations where, you know, you're never satisfied with um, your child's performance. Um, you, you're always comparing them to, to, to other kids or other people's kids, um, which is sometimes tempting to do. I guess we've all made that mistake sometimes. But, um, you know, I always like to say that your children are on their own um, individual journey, uh, on their own continuum, and they'll move it at their own pace, not necessarily the same pace as their brother or their cousin or your friend's children. Um, as long as our children are moving along that um, continuum of learning in a good, um, uh, no, steady and, and moving forward kind of a way. Of course, these parents in this slide, they must have just been included in a world record there. And, you know, their little fellas coming along, he's doing his best, but dad are up there, look like they won't be happy unless he makes that, um, that world record um, jump. Um, the impact on your child, yes, you can certainly see there. So look, there is um, just a little rundown on some not so effective parenting styles that um, you kind of be aware of, so that if you find yourself heading in that direction, just go a second, let me pull back on that. I know there are better ways I can um, support my child and, um, and more in order to achieve those goals and those things that we hope for our children. All right, I'm going to go down to the next slide because now we are going to move into these parenting strengths for you to fine tune if, of course, you're already um, moving in these directions, as I'm sure many of you actually are. Once again, for the for this section of the handout, um, there are lots of different examples, and, and of course we'll share some other um, actions, perhaps by other parents in the group. But um, we might have to save that for another time. So let's have a look at the first one. Number one: develop a positive relationship with your children. So so important. I'm sure, well, of course, you know, duh, isn't that exactly what we, we do? And isn't 
that yes, the number. Let's think though about how you can know about that. And maybe you'll get some suggestions from the handout that perhaps you hadn't thought of before. Um, that the first one, and actually you can tick these boxes if you feel that you're doing pretty well with any of these, or maybe pop a question mark if there was anything that you could be doing perhaps better. Um, spending extra special time with your child. I think, uh, you know, that can be challenging with, you know, however many children that you've got at home with all their different needs. But, you know, by somehow finding time just to spend with your children one on one is time really well spent, whether it's a quick game with your children, with a child rather, um, a story, and the before bed uh, routine that you have happening where perhaps mum might be reading with one child, dad with another one or two or three, whatever it might be. Um, you know, when we are able to get our time, you might say, well, do you know what? I'm going to take you and we're going to go out for our walk in that direction. And the rest of the family is going for the walk in that direction. So that perhaps you're having some special one-on-one -on -one time um, with a particular child. You know, back in the days of freedom, you could go out and hot or, you know, go and basketball down on the basketball court with your child one-on-one, -on -one, giving them that actual time. Plenty of physical affection. It's always important. It's more important right now when you know, lots of us are struggling in one way or another. The third um, dot point there, actively listening. And mums, I know that can be a challenge because it's been a challenge for me um, in years gone by too. And um, why is that? Because we all solve, don't we? We want to be as quick to solve whatever problem our child has, is, is experiencing. And we, we know what they could do to get through it. And maybe we've been through it and we just want to tell, tell, tell how to, how to resolve it. Often our kids just want us, they just want us to listen. And they're talking, they're kind of processing at the same time. And, you know, at the end of the conversation, they're likely to say, well, do you know what? I actually think I'm going to x y or z well do you know what i i think i've kind of worked out what i need to do next and all you have had to do is listen i know the old set we've got one years so we should listen twice as much as we talk but i know it's a challenge sometimes that's for sure um, the at an easy tone of voice yes, so it might be something important and serious but keep that tone sort of open keep that you know, firm and kind and interested and concerned rather than just kind of going the, mm, 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 the negative um, as, as our first option. The next top point talks about being emotionally resilient and calm. When and we're actually going to, to um, talk a bit more later in the slide, come back being emotionally resilient. All right, let's have a look at the next um, capability, number two. So this is where, uh, in, in contrast to the Olympic long jump of the previous, this is where we want to um, communicate high expectations to your children, but ones as well. You know, now and again, remind kids that you expect them to do the best that they can, to trust. And to remind them that while they may not be the best in their class at maths or reading or writing or PE or art or whatever it might be, that they still have a responsibility to put in their best effort, to try as hard as they can to be the best that they can be. High realistic expectations. What are your expectations? What are your rules for behaviour in your family? Or what are our family our family expectations. What can we all each do as a member of this family to make our family the best that we can possibly be? Speaking respectfully. You know, um, I, I would use the sentence, that's not how we speak to each other in our family. In our family, we don't speak meanly to each other. In our family, we talk kindly and we talk calmly and we sort things out. So set these, um, these sort of expectations. And of course, what are the consequences of not um, playing by the rules of, of your family? Third dot point, recognise your child when he's worked hard. Recognise your children when they're making good behavioural um, choices. Well done, you. I watched while 
and you tried us down you were concentrating you powered through all those examples well done you what a fantastic effort so proud of you and your your hard work and your effort um or again behavioral choices oh my goodness guys i was just listening to you making your lunch in the kitchen and i thought you're so, you're so well together you're helping each other you, know, you reached up into the hubbard and you got out plates not just for yourself but for everybody you guys you just you're just getting to me you're doing such a wonderful job working together that's what we do in our family. yay yay team um again i, I comes up that consistently those consequences be going and so that you can do that make sure that what you say you are going to do is something that you can do and you know what not not too big and horrendous i did have a, a family years ago who said to a particular child if you're behaving in this way then you won't get to come on the family holiday and sure enough as the kid um child did continue the behavior then suddenly he, he had to stick to his consequences. So, okay, well, you're not coming on the family holiday. So what are you going to do? And does that mean that the whole other family is out? It was, just a, it was, it was a little situation. So just thought that consequences that you are um, thinking in place can be followed through. Okay. Oh, do you know what? This next one, homework, examine homework. Um, don't be frightened, I'd say, to ask your child to redo something if you think it's really not, but not in an angry way, more in a, do you know what? I just don't think this is your best work. How do you feel if I'll sit here beside you while you do it, but let's just rule up another page. Let's just, I'll help you, I'll write the heading. Oh, look how nice that looks with a nice border and a nice heading. Let's do that again, hey? Because I know you can do better than that. And I want you to feel proud of your work when you're finished. Not, oh, look at that and go, oh. So, yeah, in the kindest way, sometimes you can encourage or ask or insist that your little person do a piece of work again in order to do it at the standard that you know they're capable of. All right, so now let's look at the next slide, number three. This one talks about um, providing your children with responsibilities, you know, involving them in some of the family decision making. Um, so, so they have a say. You know, lots of you out there might run family meetings. And I actually love that idea. A family meeting can take place around the dinner table. Um, it means that everybody gets a turn to speak, that um, no one gets to talk again until everyone's had a turn. So it kind of... Part of that conversation can be about the thing went well for the child that day. You know, what was your what was your greatest success today? Um, what was something that you did that kind of made you feel good inside? Um, did anyone say anything to you about what a great day you had or what a wonderful thing you were doing at school today or with your brothers and sisters? Um, and, and, and part of that can be, now look, at our meeting, we want to plan we want to plan Friday night together. We will have worked hard all week and we need a bit of a break. And we were thinking we might, I don't know, make popcorn and watch a movie. So I want you guys to have a think about what movie that you might like to watch. You know, try and think about something that's going to make everybody kind of happy. It'll be good, a good movie for everybody to watch. Um, and then maybe tomorrow we'll ask you to, um, to, to tell us and we'll vote uh, on what movie we're going to watch. And we'll make popcorn and we'll have a movie night on Friday night. Um, being in charge of something is 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 great um, and obviously age appropriate. Um, if it is taking care of the family pet, make sure it's um, you ch keep checking the water uh, for the budgie or whatever it might be. Um, and also not just always picking up the poop in the backyard, like make the responsibility um, some fun aspects, but also some of the tougher aspects um, of um, you know taking responsibility for something in the family. Um, the third dot point talks about providing choices, um, but, um, you know, not whether or not they do something, but when they do it. 
the example there says, um, so are you planning to do your homework um, before dinner today or after dinner? Are you going to um, do the schoolwork from the Zoom as soon as you finish the Zoom? Or do you want to take a you know, half hour break and come back to it? Um, you're going to have your shower this morning or in the afternoon. So it's not kind of you know whether they do or they don't, but a question of they do it then or they do it then, um, and they feel like um, they've got some say instead of being said, right, this is what we're doing, this, 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 this. Uh, and I've talked there about um, planning special events and, and activities. I mean, you know, if you're doing um, catch up with grandparents, um, so everybody gets a job. What are you going to do or um, to? Or what are you going to talk about? I think that's a really good one. Um, you know, I would often kind of cue my what looking to you know grandpa on the phone. What are you going to say so that there's not these. Um, awkward silences. <laughs> um, and also, you know, teach your kids about the the, the kind of tennis match that um, a phone conversation or a Zoom conversation is, that they sort of bat a question over the net and then um, back comes an answer and back they come with, with something else. So there's that lovely toing and froing and the children know that they actually have a responsibility to keep that ball going backwards and forwards over the net and not just kind of sit there silently waiting for, you know, whoever's on the other Zoom or, or the call to um, keep the conversation bubbling along. That was probably nothing to do with that section, but just an added, an added suggestion. Okie dokie, down to parent strength number four. Okay, so supporting your children's individual interests. You know, you, know you might uh, love and adore basketball or you might love and adore, um, I don't know, um, 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 oh, uh, oh, I wish I could think of it, you know, building models with, it's not Minecraft, um, can't think, the Lego, Star Wars, whatever it might be. But you know what? Maybe your little person isn't that keen. So I guess it's a it's a question of finding out what are your children's interests um, and um, giving them the opportunity to explore them uh, and just if yes, they are for them or no, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe not so much. Um, it talks about there about the extracurricular activities that you could um, organise, organize, which is fabulous. But I actually love the recent um, push, I guess, or well, we can't do anything at the moment, locked down, but you know, that great ad with that little girl the sniffles, she's at judo and she's guitar, violin and she's off at this and this and this, and actually she's doing so much. I think, you know, we can maybe lessen the slightly slower pace that um, forced and, um, you know, give our kids less things, things that they have to do after school and maybe have a bit more time um, just to chill out and relax. But um, apart from that, um, if they do decide they want to have a crack at Taekwondo or ballet or whatever it might be, and they sign up for a term, I hope you're the sort of parents who don't let them quit after a week or two. You know, to say, well, no, actually we've signed up for the term um, and you need to see through the term. And at the end of the term, if you've decided it's not for you and you'd like to try something else, sure, we'll talk about it then. But you've you've signed up and in this family, we stick with the things that we say and you know regroup at the end of the term or at the end of the semester or or whatever it is okie doke down to number five be interested in and involved in your children's education look this is so important absolutely so important um you know kids love it when they get to share their skills with you uh maybe they've got a favorite book that they've been reading at home, um, you know, take the time to praise them and say, gosh, you're a good reader. Do you know what? Next time we're Zooming with Grandma, can you read her that book? Uh, because she will be amazed at how you're coming a wonderful reading. And when we're back at school and if they seem to bring home the same book all the time, that's okay. Do you know why they do? Because they can read it. Every time they read it, they feel successful 
proud and happy and, and going to sort of generate a greater love of so that paying attention, asking what did you do today in PE, um, what did you do today, what did you learn about in SEL and you can do it. Are you, I know you're learning about confidence. Tell me a bit more about Connie confidence. So you're taking that interest and the kids go, oh, wow, and they want to tell you back. Of course, when you pick up after school, bay, when we can, you know, do that, or I guess we can do that still, silly me, um, do, as soon as they jump in the car. So what did you do today? Uh, did, did, you, did you play with anyone? Was anyone mean to you? Da, 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 all the grilling that sometimes happens. Just take a breath. You know, it'll come. It'll come. They will share. Yeah, but don't feel as if you need because I've sometimes hear of kids are going, oh gosh, I don't know what to say. Um, 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 and they're looking for things to say because they're kind of being grilled. Just make it a, 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 a kind of a thing that you ask about their get to know their teachers, teachers' names, and not only in preschool, kinder, um, at primary school, that's easy, at high school as well, right? Be that parent who knows the teachers and the teacher knows you because you're interested in your child and because you want the best for your child and you're there to support and to support the child. And yes, you can to work a wonderful part that all teachers aspire to, that partnership of teacher, parent, child, all working together. Um, oh, this is an interesting the second dot point. When your children are doing things that they enjoy, that's interesting, that, you know, they're in the flow, you, you don't have to sort of push the praise too much. They're doing it because they love it and that's fantastic. But if they, it's not here, but the time to heap the praise is when you see your child doing something that they don't enjoy. That's, that's a task for them that they don't love, that they don't particularly want to do. Just talking part, a, oh, good on you, darling. I can see that you do X, whatever the subject is. And I know it's not your favourite, but look, you're concentrating, you're doing your best. Well done, you. That's fantastic. Keep up the great work. Um, and yeah, communicate your belief with effort. If they try, they, then they'll be successful. At school, outside of school, that's a bit of a life school, isn't it? I think a life skill. I think a lot of kids actually miss that um, connection between effort and success. Like, you know, all the um, the block and all those sorts of um, shows that are everywhere at the moment. Sometimes the kids see the beginning where it's all a bit of a nightmare of a bomb side of a, you know, wreck of a house. Um, and then they see um, a few ad breaks and Jamie or whoever it is that comes in and another couple of ad breaks and then suddenly they're the product and go whoa look at that I mean I've fallen for that at times you know I thought oh I could do that at my place um but then you actually realize the had yet is actually involved um I think those shows kind of they don't represent the the effort the time and the people that go into this uh, gorgeous uh, finished product okie doke all right, so, oh, number six, sorry. Number six, slide. Oh, no, that's the one. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Number seven. Okay, so we're up to um, teaching character strengths, life effectiveness skills. Oh, look, following from my last um, rant, um, success is nine-tenths perspiration and one-tenth inspiration. It's great to have the ideas, but you're hard. Yaka that's um, involved to get the outcome. So character strengths, as you'll see in the handout, these kind of um, talk a little bit about those five keys that without you can do it. Um, the first dot point there, how to get along with others. You know, what to say, what to do to make friends, how to solve conflicts peacefully, um, how to work in a group, how to learn, how to well how to win well um if you're playing games at home with your children down oh my god there's nothing more powerful than you could to be perfectly well that and doing jigsaw puzzles because games jigsaw puzzles teach kids 
predictability. Teach kids do the hard yards. Teach those things about winning and losing and taking turns and working together as a team. Um, discuss and demonstrate different resilience skills. You know, talk to someone, talk to someone if you're feeling worried or angry or um, sad, uh, as, as many children are feeling in this heightened emotional period of, of lockdown. Um, you know, how to not blow things out of proportion. You know, not to make things worse than they are. I'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Um, exercising, making a point to get out for your exercise or stay in and do some exercise, whatever it might. Get out on that trampoline if you've got one because bounce, bounce, bouncing on a trampoline, fantastic. Um, focusing on the positive, not the negative. I don't know if you can see up behind me, but I've got a, a gorgeous um, print on the wall there that says... Um, on the bright side and I think that we need healing for our children at the moment. They sure need it, remember? They look up to you. Um, they're looking to see your response to world events. Um, positive light on it, benefit. And remember on the phone and you think that this little person's watching TV and this little person's reading a book and this little person's, uh, you know, doing their homework, they, they're those radar dish ears will swivel in on you and uh, they'll be able to hear what you're saying to the person on the other end of the phone. So try to focus on the positive, not the negative. Okay, values, spending time during the year um, discussing values. You know, what it means to be trustworthy, to have respect, to be responsible, to be fair, to be a good citizen. Um, talking about confidence be more confident and talk about making mistakes don't be afraid to make mistakes and I'm always saying that as a cl class teacher now you don't need to just cross it out don't worry about people about what people are thinking about you when you have a go just have a go I don't know if any of you are watching the voice at the moment but oh my gosh blow your weight great example of people just 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 getting out there and having a crack having a go um, take opportunities to model how persistence helps you, helps everyone. You know, the old phrase, no pain, no gain. And I really referred to that a bit earlier. I talk about organisation. You know, plan ahead. What do you need to have ready for your Zoom today? I heard the teacher yesterday asked you for, to go and get some paper. Let's get the paper handy right now. Let's make sure you've got your pencils all sharpened. Um, you know, make sure that when you put your things away, um, you know, Get them because it'll save you time to go where everything grab them and go same with packing up the toy room put them back where you found them all right when you want to play with it you'll know exactly where to go to um to find it so get here confident the persistence the organizer getting along and of course uh the next one is resilience oh, which brings us to parent strength number eight let's go to the next slide Oh, oh, yes, as I said, there's our five little dudes who we use in the early childhood program um, and in the early years at primary school. Oh, okay. So, sorry, um, my techno whiz helper. We're going to just quickly talk here for things you can say to your children when you see them demonstrating those um, character strengths, if you like. Um, effectiveness skill. If you're wanting to build confidence in your child, then when you see them being confident, tell them. That took confidence, you say. You weren't afraid to make a mistake. That wasn't easy to do, but you did it. You are just like Connie Confidence. So teaching your kids in the act of here, be confident and acknowledging them for it, fantastic, powerful, so powerful. Rather than nagging to be it, catch them being it and practice them what an effort you put in, you stuck to that, you didn't give up, you died hard. I often say to the kids, doesn't that feel good? Look at that quality work. Don't you feel great inside? Well done you. That's because of you put in. Or and and or you are just like PD persistence. Okay. Uh, this next slide is a little fellow, Billy Gunn, years ago now, I must say, who really took the language to heart and he drew this picture. I am confident at being 
cartwheel. You get it. All right, next slide. Uh, a little fellow, Josh, learning about persistence. I'll read this to you, teacher eyes. When I heard about persistence, I stopped making excuses, going to the toilet and wasting time. Wasting time means asking to go to the toilet and having a drink. That's time wasting. I'd rather be doing my work than going to the toilet and having a drink and time wasting. You won't get your work done that way. It's easier being persistent by Josh. That's pretty cute. Okay, now the next slide, here we are the things that you can say to your child to build their organization, to build their getting along skills. You're really organized. You've got everything you need ready to go. You really planned your time well, just like oscillation. Or as I said earlier, catching your kids in the kitchen, um, helping each other make lunch, you really cooperated well. When you help others, you learn more yourself. You're such a team player. Great sharing, just like Gabby, get along. And actually, another note on that, on that, um, along those lines is when you're watching a movie or uh, a sporting match or um, reading a book, and you see examples of these behaviours. You know, in the Olympics, when um, you know, gorgeous runner, um, he'd done his hammy or something, but he still, you know, bolted alongside his buddy yelling encouraging thing his mind you know to keep him motivated say wow look at that team player that's fantastic you know tell the stories of the earlier um earlier uh sporting heroes who um you know stopped in their race to to lean down and give a hand to um a bloke who'd fallen in the race um, so many examples in the sporting world where you can spot, you know, pinpoint and highlight to your children examples of cooperating, examples of being a team player, examples of being organised, of being confident, of being persistent. For goodness sake, the hours those swimmers must spend swimming up and down, up and down, up and down a pool, <clears throat> excuse me, just magically decide to become an Olympian. So there are so many can find in real life or movies or as I said to highlight for your kids and say wow look at um look at Nemo's dad he was so persistent wasn't he he did not give up and he found him he gave him all right let's go the next slide actually I'm going to come oh look I'll I'll, I'll do this just because of the order I'd prefer this to be down a bit further but doesn't you know if you want to acknowledge your child resilience then this is what you say oh well done sweetheart that was great that you didn't let yourself get too angry when he snatched the remote control out of your hand so resilient or that was great that you didn't let yourself get so get too worried when you made a mistake in your work you just crossed it out and you kept going that's resilience well done you or um that was great that you didn't let yourself get too down or sad when you weren't invited to the birthday party because you know that you know kids can't have every single kid at their birthday parties but you didn't get upset no you just stayed calm and you knew that there'd be plenty of other birthday parties right what a resilient girl you are you know you stayed calm you know how to bounce back great resilience yeah that was bad but you knew it wasn't the end of the world you stayed calm you are just like ricky resilience so these are great opportunities for you to reinforce your child's behaviour. Okie doke. Next slide. Okay, this is just an interesting slide. Um, there's actually a collection of character strengths that have been recognised. And um, if you go into the website, something like via.com or .com.au or whatever it might be, you can actually find out a lot more about these character strengths. And you could actually um, have your child do an online quiz for older kids, this is, um, and that'll give them a, a bit of a um, summary or an overview of their character strengths. And perhaps I think which are their three strongest and which perhaps are the three that they could really focus on to further develop those, um, those character strengths. So you might like to explore that with your children as well. Okay, down we go to number eight. Okay, so this is where we really do get into that um, 
the emotional um, resilience piece um, of the, the big picture, the uh, Ricky resilience moment, if you like. Um, so let's have a look at that one in your handout. You know, when your children are upset, be aware of their emotions, um, stay calm so that you can pay attention to their feelings, so that you can respond back with, oh, I can see you feeling angry. I can see you worried about this. You seem to be really upset, sad about this. Is that, am I hearing you right? Um, so that you can respond sensitively. Um, when they are upset, it might actually be in the first few minutes time just to give them a hug and just say, I can see how you're feeling. Come and give me a hug. But it's also an opportunity to teach them about these emotions. You know, try to listen with empathy, nodding, full eye contact, turn your body to them. Or actually, driving in the car is a good time actually to talk to your children, perhaps your older children, because you don't actually need that direct eye contact that can sometimes be a bit off-putting. So think about that if you're driving your five kilometres or whatever the limits might be, that if you do take a child with you, it's a good opportunity to, you know, have a bit of a talk without the kind of eyeballing each other. Um, help your child find the words to describe how they're feeling. Um, and of course, be aware of what behaviour is acceptable and not acceptable, even though they are feeling upset. Look, I can see you're upset, but Dal, it's, we, I can't have you behaving like that. It's not fair. It's not safe. It's not appropriate. So, you know, do you need to have some time out in your room and you can calm yourself down? Then we can talk about it. Um, I'm going to look at the next slide down, which is connected to this number eight, emotional coaching. So, so this is a great opportunity for you to talk to your children about how they're feeling in terms of the strength of their emotions. And this emotional thermometer is really handy. So we tend to sort of talk about those, the three negative emotions. Oh, when I say negative, I don't mean bad. I just mean things that can, can, can cause us to struggle. And those three are feeling sad worried and angry. Children say to me, oh, we should measure happy too, Mrs. Milne. And I say, well, look, you know what? Being happy is great. When we're feeling happy, when we're feeling excited, that's fantastic. You're great when you're feeling happy. You don't need me to help you cope when you're feeling happy. But it's when you're sad or worried or angry, that's when we need a little bit of help um, to cope and to um, recover and help ourselves calm down from these high levels of feelings. So let's quickly talk about all three of those negative feelings with this emotional thermometer in front of us. So let's say we're feeling angry. When I talk to kids about that, I say, so if you're feeling angry, you'd probably put that at about five on the emotional thermometer. Feeling angry is about the middle. Uh, what, what's a word? Can anyone think of a word that you could use that would be maybe just much lower on the on the emotional thermometer? Maybe number one or number two of that feeling. What's a word for feeling just a little bit angry? And sometimes we'll get um, annoyed. I say yes, annoyed is a really really great word to describe feeling just a little bit of ang of anger. You're feeling annoyed about something. Is there something that could be a bit higher? Another word that's higher than annoyed, but maybe not quite angry. Frustrated? Yes, that's a good word. That means you, you, you're, you're a bit more than annoyed. You're getting mm, starting to get a bit sort of steamy, you're getting frustrated. And then up to five, angry. What about at the top end of this scale? What word might, might we use to describe really, really angry? Furious? Yes, that's a good word to describe really, really angry. Let's put that up at the top, around about 10. Or enraged, yep, there's another really good word for feeling really, really exceptionally strong anger. So can you see how there's you know, some different degrees of those emotions or that emotion talking about anger? If we're talking about worried, I would suggest that we put worried about five, medium, and the same conversation. What's a word to describe a little bit uh, worried? Is it um, nervous? Is it concerned? Um, does, it, does it crank up to um, worried at five? Is anxious about seven or eight? Is panic stricken 10 out of 10? What are different words we can use to describe different degrees of feeling worried on that emotional thermometer? And then the third feeling of sadness 
which I would suggest we start by putting at five or six. What's a word to describe just a little bit sad? One, too sad. Unhappy, that's a good one. Blue, that's a good one too. And I, I often talk to kids about the fact that, you know, blue is another word for feeling a little bit sad which can also actually lead us to a discussion of beyond blue, which we would, you know, call out for support if we're feeling 10 out of 10 um, sad on that emotional thermometer. What word might we use to describe that 10 out of 10 sad on the emotional thermometer? Well, a short term strong sadness might be devastated. I've had little, little children say to me, heartbroken. I've said, absolutely, heartbroken would be at the top of the emotional thermometer. And then I might say, and what about long-term sadness that, that, that you really struggle to get over? And of course, that word would be depression. Down again, um, lower, um, miserable, unhappy, blue, I said, um, sad around the middle, um, and so on. So interesting, isn't it, that there are all these words to use for different degrees of these feelings. And how a child uses those words will actually have a direct impact on whether they're feeling right up high or whether they're down low. With that discussion, they might realise that actually they were just feeling annoyed at their brother for X, Y and Z. They weren't really furious. Now, in the next slide, oh, actually, I want to go down two slides, um, Kim, if you don't mind. Um, the catastrophe scale, this is actually a scale that helps kids realise what would be appropriate to feel in this circumstance. So you can see at the top of the catastrophe scale, some really catastrophic things that can happen all the way down to the smallest things that could happen to us and everything in between. And so asking a child to say, where do you think you're feeling on the catastrophe scale? And they'll say, oh, or, or right at the top, this is the worst thing that's happened. And you say, oh, really? Like a volcano or, or being eaten by a shark or if our house, is, was it really that bad? And they might say yes to start with, but with a bit more gentle probing, you'll discover, they'll discover that actually probably it's more around the medium, the bad, or even just down in the bit bad zone. In which case, if you flick back in your mind to the emotional thermometer, they shouldn't be feeling the 10 out of 10 strong, strong feeling, but the medium or the low, you know, annoyed, not furious. So this catastrophe scale really helps kids to put things in perspective. Oh, and it helps adults actually to put things in perspective and think about how to respond appropriately. Don't go blowing things out of proportion. Don't make mountains out of molehills. Don't make things out to be worse than they actually are. And if I'm going to jump back, um, Kim, to the previous slide, keep in mind this uh, famous quote from Shakespeare, no less, who said that things are neither good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. And I think that's, that's so, so true, that we can't change the things that happen to us, but we do have the capacity to decide how we want to think about it in a positive, helpful, rational, moving forward way, or in a negative, unhelpful, irrational, drag you down kind of a way. Things are neither good nor bad, but thinking makes them so. Okay, we'll flick down oh, to this little fellow. It's a little letter about Josh again. I think it's a different Josh, actually. I don't think it's the same little boy. Um, this little fellow um, had to work hard on his resilience. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, at the end of the year, he wrote his teacher a Christmas card. And I think this is quite cute. To Mrs. Leary, he wrote, thank you for showing me that the little things in life are at the bottom of the catastrophe scale. When I show this slide, I often say, look, you know what? He looks like a great little speller, actually, because he's had a red hot go at some tricky words there. But I don't particularly care about his spelling skills or his maths. Um, what I notice in this example is that he has really learned a powerful life lesson, hasn't he? That the little things in life are at the bottom of the catastrophe scale. Go you, Josh. What a resilient boy he is. 
Okay, down to the next slide. We're nearly there, team, doing really well. You know, this is a bit connected to that previous um, little message there about your thinking. Be a positive person for your children. You know, they take their cue from you. Uh, you determine the weather in your family. If it's a bright, sunshiny day in your family, you'll be the one who's leading it. If it's a dark and doomy, gloomy day in your family, you'll be the one who's leading it. So sometimes we have to take a deep breath and for the sake of our kids, um, push ourselves um, to be that positive person, to model um, getting out there and getting the activity, to model the helpful, positive thinking, to acknowledge that we're struggling. I'm not saying to be you know, this wonder person, to say, look, I'm struggling but I know how important it is for me to take control of my thinking and to realize that we'll get through this. Um, we will come out the other side, whatever the, the challenge is that you're facing, um, because your children are looking up to you and, and being guided um, and, and copying you. So it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a responsibility, isn't it? I hope that you've picked up some tips today to, to power through. Right. Um, this is one kind of added in really because we've, just, we've realized the importance of self acceptance. And to, to phrase Dr. Michael Bernard, who developed You Can Do It Education, um, I heard him at a workshop once say that um, accepting yourself is the cornerstone of mental health. It's big. And it's true, isn't it? You know, how many adults, or rather, I'll say children first, how many children do we see, observe, maybe in our own families, we certainly do in a classroom setting, who struggle with self-acceptance, who are putting themselves down, telling themselves they're hopeless, that they'll never be able to do it, they can't do it. And now I ask how many adults struggle with self-acceptance? You know, plenty of us. But we want our kids to be able to say or think, this is me and I'm okay with me. Tall or short, fat or skinny, good at this, not so good at that. This is me and I'm okay with me. So important. So what are some tips here? You know, indicate to your children that self-worth comes from who they are, what's on the inside and that their value doesn't come from what they achieve. Their value doesn't come from what other people think of them. You know, I say that daily to kids. Don't let that person's mean words make you feel bad. You know who you are. You know what a great little person you are. Why are you letting her words or his words make you feel bad? Remember the strengths that you have, the person that you are. Um, you know, help your children appreciate their different strengths, whether it's their character, their talents, their aptitudes. Um, show by what you say that they're all important. They're different, but they're important. And this sibling's skill set is different to this sibling's skill set and this cousin's skill set and this friend's skill set. And that's OK. Um, when your children have been unsuccessful, when they've been criticised, when they've been teased, you know, help them to be self-accepting, to value themselves no matter what. Ah, show your children, here's that modelling again, that you accept yourself even when you haven't achieved a goal that you've set or when you've been criticised by something that you've done. And the, the last one over the page, teach your children that everyone is made up of positives and negatives. No one's perfect. And so they shouldn't rate themselves or rate others as either being totally good or totally bad because we all have these strengths and weaknesses. And we're all human and we're all trying to be the best that we can. And I really hope that these discussions help you fine tune, as I said, um, sharpen your parenting skills. And maybe you've had your minds open to the options and the possibilities that are out there um, for you as parents to be the best parents that you can possibly be. I'm going to just move to um, this next slide, which is about um, that there is a, an, an online, you can do it education, positive parent program that you can access. Um, a lot of it is free. 
Um, there's e-learning modules, there are audios and videos, there are articles that you can read. Um, I can um, certainly share some of those with you via the kindergarten, but you might be keen to go in online and explore it yourself. You can certainly explore it um, without logging in, but you can also, um, I think, become a member and access a lot of these wonderful, you know, real time um, webinars, etc., to help strengthen your skills as a highly effective parent. And I'm going to finish with the final slide, which well, it's, it's, it's a, a bit of a, um, you know, big picture stuff. You, you know, in fact, you do have what it takes to turn your dreams for your children, the things we discussed in that very first slide, um, into a reality. You know, you can be confident to do this and you can be calm when faced with challenges. Um, be persistent. Don't give up. This is a, a long-term journey you're on, isn't it, as parenting? I mean, my kids are almost all of them in their 30s and, um, you know, I still feel that I can contribute um, to their lives as an effective parent. Um, this is not something that you're going to do in 10 minutes and be done with. It's going to be a lifelong journey for you as it is for your children. Um, get organised, um, says me, who's not terribly organised. Um, and finally, Take positive actions. Take positive actions to be the very best person that you can be. Thank you so much for tuning in to this workshop. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Take a breath, be calm, and I'll finish by saying thanks again for tuning in and you can do it. Bye for now.